class, welcome to baking school. I am Kristen Baker Betty Hoffman, a trained chef and the baking instructor over at bakerbetty.com. Now this is the very first day of baking school. I am so excited to get started and we are on the baking fundamentals course of baking school. Today I wanted to talk to you about the most important thing that I learned when I went to culinary school and that is the concept of mise en place. Now, if you're not familiar with the term mise en place, it is a French phrase that translates to mean putting in place and everything in its place. So I actually started working in restaurants when I was 14 years old. My very first position was as the salad bar girl at a pizza place in my hometown. Now, my job, at that time was to restock the salad bar, keep it clean, and prep things to put on the salad bar. And I have worked every position pretty much from front of house to back of house in over 15 years of working in restaurants. I've worked in a lot of very casual restaurants, but also some pretty fancy restaurants. And as I worked more and more in restaurants, I started noticing that this phrase is used interchangeably as a noun and a verb. So you might hear a cook refer to all of the ingredients that they've prepped for a dish that they are going to prepare as their mise en place. But they'll also use the phrase, I'm going to mise my station, talking about the action of getting all of these ingredients ready. This phrase is thrown around a lot in restaurants and professional baking scenarios, um, but I wanna talk to you today about how we can use it in our home kitchens, for baking specifically. And I'm going to share with you my five principles of mise en place. So the first principle of mise en place is that I want you to read your recipe through from start to finish all the way before you ever start baking. And ideally, you probably wanna read it more than one time, especially if it's a new recipe you've never tried before. Now this is something I still follow every time I go to bake something, even if it's something I feel pretty comfortable with. This just gives you the opportunity to really understand the workflow and the timeline of the recipe. And number two, I want you to identify any techniques and terminology in the recipe that you might not be familiar with. Go ahead and get on the computer, use YouTube, use Google, and gain a clear understanding of what the technique and terminology means. And actually, in lesson three of the Baking Fundamentals course, we are going to review all of the basic techniques and terminology used in baking, so that's going to be a great resource for you. Number three, I want you to start with a completely clean slate. Now, admittedly, this is the part of mise en place that I struggle with the most. I often think to myself, I'm going to have to clean my kitchen after I'm finished baking anyways, so why don't I just wait until I'm done? but I've learned the hard way by dumping an entire ramekin of salt into a cookie dough thinking that it was sugar because I didn't clear my workspace first. So learn from me, definitely start with a clean workspace, an empty sink, uh, ideally an empty dishwasher so that as you're baking you can easily work cleanly and it'll just be such a simpler process. Number four, gather everything you need for the recipe before you start combining any of your ingredients. So I want you to get out any equipment, any utensils, and then all of the ingredients that you're going to need for the recipe. And then before you start combining those ingredients, I want you to measure each one out before you start putting them together. Now I've heard the argument before that this creates so many more dishes to wash. And as somebody who is constantly recipe developing, I really get this dilemma because I'm constantly washing dishes. But I'm telling you, this can prevent so many problems. You don't wanna get in the middle of making your muffin recipe and realize that you're out of baking powder and have to run out to the store and get it. It also ensures that you won't forget to add any ingredients into your recipe and that you won't accidentally add something in twice. So I actually like to group my ingredients together by how they will be used in the recipe. So for instance, if I'm making a muffin recipe, all of the dry ingredients are combined together and all of the wet ingredients are combined together before I combine the two parts together. So I would group all of my dry ingredients together over here and then all of my wet ingredients together and then I'm all organized and ready to go for when I'm going to start making the recipe. Number five, after I've put into place all of my mise en place, I've read my recipe, I understand all of the techniques and terminology, I have a clean workspace, 
and I have all of my ingredients and equipment ready to go, then I'm going to start baking. I have to tell you that even though I worked in restaurants for 13 plus years before I ever went to culinary school, I didn't take this principle quite so seriously until it was drilled in my head once I was in class. And I'm here to tell you that I still utilize these principles every single day, every single time I cook. It has made me a more confident baker and a baker who has so many more successes in the kitchen. So I can't stress enough how important these principles are. So now your homework assignment. Now this is completely optional, but I would love it if you participated. Sometime in the next few days, I'd love for you to bake something. It can be something new or something you've made time and time again. I'm so excited that you've decided to enroll in the Baking Fundamentals course. We're gonna learn so much over the next few weeks and I can't wait to dive in. Thanks guys, see you next time.